morning, welcome back for the second day of our Science and Compassion Conference. Thrilled to welcome you back for another day of insight and learning and to bring us all into presence and properly welcome us. It's my wonderful honor to introduce a senior teacher with Stanford's Compassion Cultivation Program who will help set our intention for the day and also introduce you to a little overview of the, cultivate, the Compassion Cultivation Program if you don't know of its great work. So please welcome Margaret Cullen, Senior Compassion Teacher. I paid all these people to attend this morning. Um, so, uh, given the clapping and cheering, I actually probably don't need to do much of an overview of CCT because I think more than half of the people here have gone through the training, but um, I'm going to say a little bit about it. First, I want to say that you probably noticed that Monica Hansen was supposed to speak this morning. Um, she was ill and couldn't come. She's doing better, for those of you who know her. Um, and for those of you who don't know her, she's kind of like the good mother of the Compassion Cultivation Training Program um, in the old-fashioned sense when I was growing up. The mother who didn't get a lot of credit, who was in the background, made things hum and run and efficient and loving and clear limits. And I'm actually really sad that she didn't have her day on the stage this morning, um, but she will be teaching uh, with Erica Rosenberg and I on Sunday if you come to the retreat. Uh, also want to acknowledge the other senior teachers of CCT, uh, Erica Rosenberg, Leah Weiss Ekstrom, and Kelly McGonigal. Kind of a dream team, actually, for me to work with. Uh, so. I think before I even get into spending a couple of minutes talking about CCT and then doing a brief uh, practice with you, I'd like to acknowledge that it's Veterans Day today. And uh, I think many of us are touched directly by an experience of suffering and loss, and some of us less directly uh, around suffering and loss, and some of us just feel tremendous pain about the suffering of war in general. Um, so I invite you, uh, in whatever way feels comfortable and natural to you, to just take a moment um, and check into what you're feeling as you think about the reality of war, of how it touches us as individuals, as communities, as nations. and to silently offer any wishes that might bubble up for you to soothe and comfort those who are suffering and right now, both the soldiers who are on the front lines, their families, uh, the many generations that are touched by the experience of loss through uh, military service. Thank you. And I'll just add, uh, for me personally, I had the really extraordinary privilege to teach a contemplative program to military spouses on an army base as part of a research project with Amishi Jha. And um, as a Berkeley girl, I was um, out of my element. And it was incredibly heart opening and mind opening for me both. So I'll say a little bit about CCT. We'll do a little 
uh, practice. I I just found out I was doing this yesterday afternoon and kind of re rewrote it last night and then again in the car. So we'll see what comes out. Um, but those of you who are at the retreat on Sunday, I'm going to do a more detailed overview of CCT. So um, the program involves training the mind, developing specific skills in how we relate to ourselves and others, and intentionally choosing a compassionate perspective for our thoughts and compassionate motivations for our actions. And uh, had I known I was speaking today, I would have paid closer attention to who said what yesterday. But I think Dr. Cameron uh, talked about perceived compassion limitations and overload. And someone else mentioned Tanya Singer's work about uh, empathy distress and how it's different from compassion fatigue. Empathy fatigue versus compassion fatigue. So I actually think this is very unscientific. A lot of what we're doing in CCT is describing an experience that doesn't fatigue and doesn't distress. And certainly there are elements of empathy within compassion, but this thing that we are exploring in a very multimodal way doesn't wear out, doesn't tire you out. It is immeasurable, which is kind of borrowed from the Buddhist principles that it comes from. Um, and there's actually a degree of uh, confidence and joy that arises from this thing that we're calling compassion. So a big part of what we're doing is saying it is this, it is not that. Through the body, through the mind, using, um, I loved the presentation about moral elevation. We'll often use stories, uh, video clips to inspire and elicit the feeling of compassion. Um, the weekly classes include uh, lectures, small and large group discussions, dyads, experiential exercises, training, and a lot of real world on the spot, compassion on the go, kindness on the go. You know, I don't have time, I don't have time. Actually, you do, just walking down the street, it's possible to look at that stranger and think, hmm, imagine their life wish that they be free of suffering. So the other thing I just wanted to mention briefly, um, something we're all very excited about is the uh, instructor training program that we've developed over the last three years. Um, and in the last two years, almost 100 people have participated in our teacher training. CCT has been taught in 14 states and 10 countries around the world, including now Botswana, Argentina, Australia, Canada, Chile, Colombia, England, Mexico, Spain, and Sweden. And there are quite a number of people today who are here who are either certified teachers or somewhere in the training process. And I'm wondering if you'd be willing to stand up for a moment. Yeah, see, we, we paid them to come. <laughs> Um, no, stay standing for a second. Um, first, I'd really like to acknowledge uh, your hard work and your deep commitment to compassion. 18 months of training, quite a bit of money, a lot of time, uh, a willingness to really put out in the world that this is what I care about. And, um, and also to invite all of you who are interested in the program to just make a note of who these guys are and maybe you could ask them about it if you're interested. Thank you. I do. OK. Um, I'm going to move over to a chair because it's really hard for me to lead a meditation standing up. And uh, I think I'm still might. And somebody talked about posture yesterday. I can't remember who, but um, who was it? Oh, OK. Um, posture does make a difference. OK, so I might be, am I echoing off this mic now? Should I turn it off? Or is it OK? All right, 
Great. Okay, so we're just going to take a couple of minutes now to do a short compassion practice, uh, very short. And I invite you, I, I see most of you have already shifted your posture, to find a way of sitting that signals to the mind and the heart a shift from just kind of focusing on what you're listening to or perhaps being lost in thought to being present here in the body. A posture that in some way embodies dignity and dignifies what you're about to do. And then take about three or four deep cleansing breaths. Allowing the exhalation to be longer than the inhalation. Enjoying the down regulation of the polyvagal to the sympathetic nervous system as you take your long, deep breaths. And after your next out breath, Allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm. And focus your attention on the rising and falling of your chest as you breathe. And see if you can feel into that tender spot somewhere in the center of your chest. Perhaps imagine peeking behind the curtain of the kind of persona, as it will, that sometimes is like a shield of armor over the chest. Everyone is here because they care about compassion. So see if you can find the place in you that cares, that holds this as a value. And then using your imagination, see if you can expand, grow, increase that feeling by bringing to mind a person or a situation or a pet in whose presence you feel cared for, soothed, comforted, seen, fully accepted, a safe harbor, And notice what it feels like in the body to be in the presence of this caring and compassionate place, person, animal. And breathing this feeling in and out of your heart, inviting it to expand 
and radiate out. Imagine a loved one and offer them in your imagination this experience when they're distressed to tap into within their own heart or to have around them a source of soothing and care, comfort and ease. And now if you're willing to, open your eyes for a moment and just look at somebody near you that you don't know. And take a moment with quiet eyes to see them. Maybe offer a smile. Doesn't need to be anything too heavy or intense. And close your eyes again. And wish for this person near you that you don't know to be the recipient of this care. knowing that as human beings, they have suffered, they may be suffering now, they will suffer, and wish for them this possibility of receiving compassion, being comforted. And then letting go of the meditation, coming back to the experience of breath in the body, of your living, precious body, your unique vehicle to express, to contribute, to embody that which matters most to you. May all beings enjoy the love and soothing and care that's possible. May everyone here fulfill completely their capacity to express and embody (coughs) compassion. So I'll now turn the floor over to the esteemed Dr. Zimbardo.